Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Again, hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger and I would like to welcome you all uh, to another episode of the Black Manosphere Show of the Week. The blackness of the Manosphere has everything to do with this, as you can probably surmise from the title, probably. Because I don't expect the title alone to tell everybody what's going on, but um, <clears throat> I, being new to the Black Manosphere, have still come to understand something that I have understood multiple times before when it has come to anything major in history, human history, not just Black history, but human history, that um, I'm now seeing again when it comes down to this. Gender relations and the human species are being revolutionized slowly, step by step, but the steps, though small individually, are going to add up to become a revolution. They're going to add up, I should say, to equal a revolution. Despite all of the other species in which the men do the pursuing and the women control access to them draws, and the human species, because there is an institute of marriage, and the commitment that goes therewith. The men are beginning to say, you can hang up all commitment. You can give up on commitment from us if you just sit back and do what you want to do. This will either be a trade or it will be nothing at all. A fair exchange is no robbery. And since you West Tunisians are insistent upon there being no exchange at all, screw you uh, unless you're just going to bend over and I hit that and then walk off, then I'll just walk off right now. That's the end of it. And I think that that's right for these, um, these men to start to do to a certain extent. I don't press for fornication. I don't believe men should press for it. But by the same token, what men are saying in a nutshell is stop bringing all the stress that goes with um, any kind of sex at all, be it marital or fornication, quit bringing stress just because we have sex. Don't do that. We don't want to hear that. You get relief like we do, unless you don't communicate enough or you're just difficult to please. That's what winds up being the case. There is an exchange already in that in and of itself. You now have access to all manner of birth control more so than men do. And you don't even want men that use birth control. So um, you're getting what you want. You have access to what you want on your terms. But the only term that seems to consistently be put on the table for us is there must be some kind of stress. And so men are revolutionizing that. In the West, and as this misandry is exported from the West elsewhere, men are going to revolutionize it there too, hopefully. But there's something about this. See, it is the black man that is responsible for this change. Again. And it will. it is now Western black men that are starting this, and it will become more and more so black men of all nationalities, Western, Eastern, or anything else that are going to get in the way of this as well, that are going to keep pushing this forward. More and more black men are going to do this, and we already know what the reason is that they would. They would do this because we have women in various cultures of our race. One race, multiple cultures. We have various cultures in our race in which the women are just too damn fresh out of pocket. We got cultural practices, even on the motherland, that are just outright wrong. And they would never be tolerated in the reverse. You got a culture in the motherland in which the aunt of the, the, the prospect of bride is going to dance and twerk on the groom and he's not supposed to even so much as Papa Woody. And granted, I would say that this is a type of self-control for men to emulate and to look for, but it is not, it is not a type of self-control to play with and it is not one for the ladies to turn around and test at their will just because they want to make sure that this man is not polygynous. There are other ways to avoid adultery if that's what you seek to avoid. So <clears throat> we are going to 
once again be behind one of the major changes in not not even just human history, but human biological behavior. We're going to be behind one of the major changes and we're not going to get credit. See, one of the main misconceptions of the manosphere in general is that it's not black. No, black men are responsible for that. That's one of the major changes right now. We are that particular force. I knew about a red pill sphere, if you will, years ago, a decade ago. I thought it was a bunch of white conservative guys who understood the games that women play, but they couldn't understand the basic fundamental truth of racial equality. That's why I wasn't more red pill preaching a long time ago. I preached against women's materialism and the games they played. I didn't know that there were other black men talking against the same thing till about 20, um, about 2017, I began to realize that there were some black men doing this. And I think 2018, I realized there was a black manosphere. And I got a voice in the black manosphere in 2019 due to the help of Don Calypso, Roger, Edward Allen Anderson, I am classic. Mike Elam, although I'm not sure where he is now. I hope he's okay. I got a voice in there because of them. And there's some other voices in there, um, like uh, Dwight Hayes. I mean, some other factors that got, got me this voice. Dwight Hayes and uh, Abdullah bin Bobby. Shouts out to them. Salam alaikum, brethren. They really were the ones that, that, that referred my... Um, uh, my YouTube name at that point, Blackheart, to the others. You could say they put me on. Alid, I'm not going to say his last name, they put me on. Some of them even um, know my old legal name and they never said anything. So I found out that there's this black manosphere, like many others have found out late in the game, because we black men are the originators of what you might call red pill awareness. I wouldn't say we're the first men in the world to ever have it, but we have been the first ones to bring it into the cultural forefront. And white men of the MRA spheres and the white man spheres have even said as much. And yet they still want to tout their um, white supremacy and white nationalism hidden behind some sort of behavioral and moral conservatism. Therein is one of the greatest misconceptions that this is their thing. I know because I was a victim of it. They have said as much, even the Proud Boys. See, red pill awareness amongst black men has led to a bit of a rage, but, some con but eventually a constructive harnessing of the rage and, and the motivation that comes with it channeling the reactions that must come about so that the reactions are in the right direction. The white manosphere has led to withdrawal, which is not necessarily wrong. It is uh, uh, reasonable and understandable. It has also led to the red pill rage that has led to violence, even though most of them are not violent. That is a vast, it is a vast difference. We are not the same. If Kendrick Lamar wants to say they not like us, it is about them that it must first be said. They not like us. I don't say this because I hate them for their DNA sequence or their melanin count. That's not the reason why. I say this because what I'm coming to understand is that things that are a solution to us, they always hijack. And when I say I don't own, when I say they, I don't only mean the European either. It's not just them. I'm beginning to see something happen across the board. Bigger than what you you might think I'm discussing right now as I talk and I'm going to explain how much further this goes. Black men need to be aware of the red pill or aware of the red pill truths, we should say. Now, that is not a religion. That is a reality that women have chosen to make true. They could have made it untrue with different behaviors. They didn't. Not in the West. Now, we can argue about how authentic it is when you go into patriarchal societies or other societies. We could debate that all day. The point is that the actual behaviors are generally speaking in the West.
and in developing nations that are joining. I heard the Philippines introduce some new feminist laws. Dinah Demir has said that back in Africa, mostly Nigeria, that if those women could pick up the phone and weaponize the system against their men over there, they would do it. They just can't. But that they're fresh out of control to the extent that they can be. In other words, they'll be as bad as they're allowed to be. He said that. And he doesn't play in the snow anymore. He's only for black women, which is I can understand. But he even he has to be only for those patriarchal black women of back home where they don't just get fresh out of control with their men. And the funny thing is Nigeria's got women that do that. Their money, not because they want money, but because they'll sit up and look at the men and pretty much say, look, damn it, if you ain't swimming in money, which most people don't have on the planet, men, women, old, young, black, white, if you are not if you don't have in abundance the exact same thing that must be rare for economies to function, damn it, we don't want you. And you're worthless. And no other woman should want you either. That's starting to sound more and more and more like Americans to the point that the London Metro Police had to issue a, a statement to the Nigerian community telling the women, stop calling the police on us. Now, they mostly said it to the community, quit calling the police for domestic disputes. But they were talking to the women. Because it didn't cross Nigerian men's mind to call the police on their women short of a threat. It was the women who wanted to do it. Well, you know, these white folks over here are going to do what I want them to do because uh, uh, I'm the one that gets to control you now that we're in their backyard. I'll shuck that fit. I can see why Donna Stamir is looking more into Senegal and Sierra Leone at this point. Been doing that makes perfect sense. They can be some very resilient and independent women financially, but they don't think they're just going to buck on a men for nothing. They're not as conscious of uh, making a, a play for power at the expense of their men the way that Southern, specifically Southern Nigerian women are, but increasingly so Northerners as well. I'm aware of that. So even when you see, when you see the negative, it's not really coming from black men. But black men are being asked to pay the price every mother cuss word time. And it gets bigger than this. Stick with me. I'm going to land this jet black aircraft. You're going to see where I'm going if you don't already see it. You see, the red pill awareness, which is a, nece which is a necessity for black men who live anywhere where any women have an advantage over them in the courts or even on the street need this. It is something that is necessary and it is being hijacked by white nationalists and white supremacist conservatives or fake conservatives. It's been that way for a while, but I I'm wary now because you see, there's another thing I've said that black people need in general, men or women, if you really want to be on the right path. I've said what the solution is. Well, guess what? The solution is still the solution. But the understanding or the perception of the directions and the regimen for that solution, think of it as a medicine. It is a medicine. It's actually think of it more as a health regimen. Think of it like that. Let's make that comparison. Well, what they're doing is they're lying about the actual instructions so that they can take that solution and try to match it up with white supremacy and white nationalism in the name of conservatism. And if you don't know what I'm talking about yet, let me go ahead and spell it out for you. Sneeko and Andrew Tate. They are taking Islam. And even now, Sneeko and Andrew Tate have their grudge going on because um, one is a little bit too racist for the other, but both of them are okay with Nick Fuentes. We Muslim. We're supposed to listen to someone like Nick Fuentes. Yeah, listen to him, hear him out, and then use his own words against him and rip him the up fuck because the man is still a racist at the end of the day. He's pretty much said it. They want to sit up here and tell Muslims to look at Nick Fuentes as some sort of bastion of conservatism when the fact is Nick Fuentes um, will tell you about his biases. 
And then when Sneeko has some shred of decency left enough in him to tell Andrew Tate, wait a minute, Islam is not about racial supremacy. Now, there may be behaviors that we have to champion, but racial supremacy is not the case. If you think a race is better than another, you actually have become uh, of another religion. I'm not going to say it, but Sneeko did. And you know what? Fuentes wanted to say Sneeko has gone woke. Sneeko has gone woke. Even the meaning of woke was hijacked. 2015, I was woke because they were generally right. By 2017, I was getting sick of what it was supposed to mean. By 2019, I already saw what was coming down the pike. And in 2020 and 2021, I started listening to many black men who were red pill aware in the black manosphere start talking about uh, the, the values and the greatness of Trump. Dennis Sperling was the most reasonable Trump supporter I've heard because he said, I'm doing this for my interest. I'm not telling you what your interests are. I'm telling you to vote your interests, but I'm telling you specifically why I'm voting for him. And it ain't for, it ain't because he's pro black. It's just simply put, I'm in a position to, to benefit by having to pay less if he's the one in charge. That's why. That's the reason. That's the most reasonable support I've heard. I still know that Trump is a monster. I know that because you can take all of the trial and how uh, uh, illegitimate the charges may have been and how circular um, the um, uh, convictions might have been. You can take all of that. He was a monster before this point. It's just that people don't realize that because they weren't in his business as much because he wasn't into politics. The man made his money by not paying people that he owes. That's not only him. He's not the only one like that. He's just one example out of many. But he was able to ride a wave of hatred. Because the meaning of woke was not just about being liberal in the beginning. Black men who were woke weren't just liberal. What they were talking about was actually a very conservative value. Justice. Then it got hijacked. And now you've got you take the red pill awareness and what it's supposed to mean. That's been hijacked. And now you got these guys that want to take Islam and they want to hijack the instructions or rather they want to hijack the exposure of the instructions so that they can lie about what the instructions are so that they can trick a bunch of Muslims into siding with white supremacists, white nationalists. And the funny thing is, a lot of Muslims are listening. But the, all of these trends are based on misconceptions. The red pill awareness is not about this white supremacist stuff. Islam definitely is not. The red pill awareness is not a part of Islam nor against Islam. It is merely the fact is that, that its truth depends on the women's behavior. They get to choose how true it is. I'm a Muslim telling you that the red pill awareness is true. Not every man's reaction to it. But that the red pill awareness is true because it is merely an awareness of games that ladies play when all of the chains and all the bets are off and all the restraints are down and anything goes. This is what it's about. And this is what their lies are about. So I'm addressing these misconceptions because not only am I sick of it. But more importantly than just how I feel in my opinions, even though my opinions about them are right in this case, more importantly, they are trying to steer you to a situation in which you're going to be sick of results that you will have earned for yourself. If you were to sit up and listen to them. So I'm going to say this to black men right now, because I've already mentioned that the red pill spaces in the black manosphere for many is a gateway to the spiritual understanding that leads people to accept Islam. Do not let the likes of Tate and Sneeko mislead you into thinking that because you believe in a type of behavior that is morally commendable and it is referred to as conservative, that that means that you should side out of loyalty to these behaviors with white nationalists and white supremacists. Number one, that's because what they're on is still some foolishness. It's falsehood. It, it might as well be devil worship. Number two, they're not even on conservatism. They're not even on particular behaviors. They're not championing these behaviors. They just don't want us getting away with it. And they also don't believe that they should have to pay for them. They're the same ones that used to believe that nobody white should ever be prosecuted for lynching a black person. They're the same ones that used to consider it a holiday when every black man was falsely accused of something. 
so that they could all take off work and go down to the courthouse and demand that the Negro prisoner uh, be released to the mob so they could burn him on a, uh, uh, on a square, the courthouse square, the town square. These are the same ones that lynched people on their way to worship at a church that my great great that my great grandfather uh, was visiting as a visiting pastor before I was born, before my father was born. When he went to visit, he told the story, and my father told me the story this last summer when I was visiting. He told the story to my father, his grandson. When they finished, the sun had just set, so half the sky was lit up and the other half the sky was not. And they were walking away from the sun and they bumped into something, but when they, uh, they were walking away from the sun set, so they bumped into something underneath some trees on their way to their cars and they didn't know what they had bumped into. But when they walked on the other side a few more feet, then they looked back to see what they had bumped into. They could see against the silhouette of the sunset that some black folks on their way to the church where he had been preaching had been lynched. The ones that did this are these same ones that are sitting up here and talking about this white conservatism, this white nationalism, um, um, this, this uh, uh, white uh, supremacy, and saying that it's these uh, uh, melanated people that are ruining the UK when in fact everybody ruins the UK if they're poor and broken up. The difference is that the UK systemically targeted the victims of its colonization for poverty so that they would be broken. And the funny thing is that even with that, it is the ones of them that are from the UK generationally that are broken poor, that are the most pissed off because of what they don't have, even though they white. And they're doing the damage. They're trashing the cars. Or they were. I don't know if the riots are still going on or not. I frankly don't feel a guck. Tate and Sneaker want to tell the Muslims that are in the UK to ally with the same people that are rioting against them in the name of some kind of conservatism. What you got is these tragic mulattoes that are trying to join, they're trying to out, uh, uh, outdo the tragic desert mulattoes with their anti-black rhetoric. I've heard the stuff that Tate said. I didn't say much about when Tate accepted Islam because I was going to see where he went first. And now we see where he went. This is what I feared as early as 2014 and 2015 when I first started this channel. I preached against this before I was really getting into the red pill awareness because I didn't know there was a black manosphere at that time. Some of my videos that are older are about these tragic desert mulattoes with the big beards that are not my enemies because they grow a big beard, but, but I'm calling them enemies because in, in spite of their outward religiosity, they still got white supremacist ideas in their head. I chewed up Asim al-Hakim about this because he had the nerve to say something about dreadlocks being a haram hairstyle. And then on top of that, he did this all lives matter crap in 2016. So I'm going to ask him, well, what about the all li what about the black lives matter movement in the United States? He didn't say, well, it was started by some lesbos and, and George Soros. And he didn't talk about the deception behind the beginning of it. He just said all lives matter. That's exactly what the white folks say. And I got sick and tired of seeing outwardly religious, non-black Scholars say this white supremacist stuff, this dismissive stuff, this racist without knowing that it's racist kind of shit. I got sick and tired of it. And then by that point, I already had a channel. At that point, I remember at that time it was Blackheart. And I took that name because Arabs didn't, non-black Arabs don't like it. They think it has an evil meaning. It could, but that ain't why I picked it. I picked it because I was sick of their assumption of whiteness, the normalization of whiteness, even though they've been colonized out here. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, these Gulf nations were colonies. They were British colonies. People forget. And here they are now, here they are, the whole culture normalized from whiteness and while they don't, they don't put black folks in danger per se, and the system here does not play around with that, the fact is that you still have in the culture this assumption that we're slaves and you should call us slaves. That's what they got here. 
Now, the difference is that the people who still hold on to that mindset here, they lose in life. I know one of the first student to fail my last spring semester was the one that was like that. I'm white. I didn't even ask him that. Somebody asked me about um, why I was glad to be there and why I felt safer there than I did in America. And his answer was, I'm white. Nigga, that ain't the question. And when I told him, well, okay, here you are. Yeah, because you're not black. But when you go into real white countries, you're not white either. As a matter of fact, they call you the N-word too. They just put the word sand in front of it. I was just telling him so that he didn't think it was going to be hunky-dory if he decided to take a trip to France or Germany or something. You know what this dude said? No, I'm white. They're wrong. Okay. <laughs> did you say I'm right? They're wrong. Or did you say I'm white? They're wrong. I'm white, doctor. I'm white. And then he's going to tell me black Saudis will say, I'm the same as you. No, they're not the same as me. My ancestors were never humiliated. And I would sit up and say to him, listen, dude. You're talking about bondage? Well, keep in mind that many of the black folks here that were in bondage were in bondage from childhood. So they started their lives out like that. Resisting or accepting was not really a question for them. But the fact that you still associate them with bondage, even though bondage here was never based on race in the first place, means that you don't even know your own history. You just think Arabs are white, I'm white, I'm normal, they're abnormal, even though I don't hate them, and that's still bad enough. I told him that. Well, you know what I'm getting at here? What I'm getting at here, the main point of what I'm getting at right now to the audience is that you get these, now you've got these dangerous, fully English-speaking, tragic mulattoes, and they're lying to you. They don't have hardly any training in Islam. Sneeko's a bit better about learning. He's, he's more willing to learn than Andrew Tate is. Tate don't want to learn nothing. All his praising of Islam before he became Muslim has amounted to nothing because now he doesn't want to learn. He doesn't want to take correction. He, none of that stuff. He refuses. You're right. He's wrong. He still says he's right. He'll tell you he's your Lord. Worship him after he took his Shahada. It don't work like that. That's blasphemy. Everybody knows that. This is known by necessity. He can't say that as a Muslim. He can't do that. And they're going to talk about masculinity. Bruh, the part of being a man is that you fix an error if you know that it's an error. Stubbornness is good for when you have been told that something was wrong and then you find out that it was right and the person telling you was the one wrong. That's where stubbornness comes in. Stubbornness is good for when you have evidence to back up a particular position, but you don't have enough evidence to override that. That's the time to be stubborn. That is what you might call strength. Stubbornness and strength are not always the same thing. You decided to give up strength for stubbornness because you know you're not the Lord. And he's going to sit up here. He and Sneeko both are going to preach his white nationalism and, and try to cozy up to these guys. And you got a bunch of other half black, non black or, or, or some sort of admixture or not. Ethnic Muslims, I would call them, trying to sit up and preach this religion. But when they're doing it, they want to cozy up to white nationalists because white nationalists and white supremacists claim to not believe in certain liberal behaviors, but they do. Some of them want to act like just pearly things are some sort of bastion of conservatism. She might believe in family, but I mean, do you really think that they're bastions of conservatism? No, her family admits to certain things. As wealthy as they are, they admit it to certain things that they don't that they're not even happy about. Muslims wouldn't do that. That's not something that did. Anyway, what I'm getting at now is that they're going to lie to you. They've already tried to lie to you about red pill awareness and some black men fell for it and went full on Republican and conservative. Some did. And when we were okay with that because they agreed more about red pill awareness with us than uh, the other black men did. And so now you've got some of them that are going to sit up and take what is a solution for really any group of people, any gender, really. It's truly just in general, a very healthy way to live and pass away. Retirement benefits are literally out of this world. And they want to take this and now they're going to lie to you about what that means. 
Now, many of you are going to believe whatever you want to believe, not based. You're not really going to choose based on the evidence. You're going to believe what you want to believe, no matter what I tell you. But one of the things that they're lying to you about clearly is when they come and try to give you this notion that Islam means that you have to be a white conservative. That your conservatism has to be of that particular white nationalist, white uh, supremacist variety. And it doesn't. You are allowed to know that everybody's culture is crap, just like I told my students a few days ago. Their culture is crap. My, people, my people's culture is crap. The Europeans' cultures are crap. Culture is a crap back on our home continent. Cultures in general are crap. You, it is okay to know this about people in general, regardless of their melanin count, because the culture is their behavior that they choose, and most people tend to choose some crappy behaviors. But it is altogether different to sit up and say this group is superior, especially when the only reason that a particular group has it better than others is because of inferior behaviors that have gone unpunished and unrequited to this day. That the injustices of a particular group of people surpassing others injustices are the reason that today they're better. That is completely anathematic to Islam, even to other religions that are related, but definitely to Islam. And they're going to lie to you and try to hide that from you and confuse you. And one of the reasons is because if you are black, but you believe that black folks are equal, they don't want you to feel comfortable joining Islam. Even though that's true, even though that's in Islam, they don't want you to know that and come in with that understanding. That's why Sneeko and Tate are willing to try to change the religion to suit them instead of changing themselves to suit the religion to which they have committed their lives. Instead of trying to change themselves to obey the God to whom they made that commitment. They're going to lie to you about that stuff. Maybe Sneeko will turn around and do a 180, possibly, maybe not. I don't really fit a guck. And you shouldn't either because we ourselves, black and white, Muslim and not, have another problem. And that is that we tend to take celebrities as a sort of uh, uh, receptor of worship. And that is our mistake. Now, Tate says worship him. Sneeko doesn't want to be worshipped, but yet and still people will follow celebrities before they will think about what it is that God wants them to do. This has been a major problem in our people's culture to a certain extent. It didn't start off that way. The celebrities became that way by talking about what the streets was like and how bad it got. But then people started feeling like they had something to prove because they liked their music. Oh, yeah, I like their music. So that means I got to act a certain way. And that means as soon as somebody step on my shoes, I got a buck on. They got chicks looking. And I can't I can't. He can't step on my shoes and just walk off like that. Because the girls are look, the chicks are looking. I never get none again, so I got to pull my pistol out, buck on him, and then the cop's going to pick me up, and I still ain't going to never get none, unless it's from an inmate. Same thing. And what's happening now is that black men are looking at the culture and saying, you know what? It was trash, especially what it was that the hyenas kept passing down from generation to generation to us. It's been trash. It ain't worked. What they're doing now is they're looking at what um, they're looking at what the old convict told uh, Cain and minister society to tell to Trey, his son, tell him that the way we grew up was BS. He's pretty much saying what we have been is crap. We have to be we have to betray that that. Um, would, uh, we have to betray the lost values as Crimson Cures refer to them. That's what he was sitting up and saying. And black men are the ones that are now doing exactly that. They're doing exactly what we have to do. We're looking at the lost values and we're saying, shuck that fit. F these lost values. They're crap. We're not following Nick Kilcher anymore and then calling it culture. And when you start getting into how you live this as a full way of life, which is the solution that I have uh, promoted before for those that, that can uh, um, live with that sort of discipline. When you start getting into that, 
Again, we are the ones that have largely been responsible for other people's ability to accept it and not face more persecution than what they do. I mean, they do face it. Hell, Tate, for instance. He'd been investigated all these years. They swooped in after he took his shahada. He faced some persecution. He accepted, and then they swooped in. All this time they've been investigating him, then they swoop in. Now, I do believe that they were investigating him before, but I don't believe in coincidence like that. They picked him up. They were like, hey, hey we got to gotta keep an eye on you. You got to be isolated because there are too many people that might actually follow you. And now they've convinced him to take that following, whether implicitly or explicitly, to take that following and then mislead them. And he's gone for it. And you got a bunch of others that are sitting up and saying he's just like some people are saying, oh, he's guilty of everything they threw at him. There's no charge that he should be able to beat. You got others sitting up and saying he's innocent of everything they've thrown at him. There's no charge uh, that, that should actually stick. You got you got and I'm telling you, you got Muslims that are sitting up and saying, oh, he never did anything wrong even before he was Muslim. We got some of them doing that and they sit up there. and what they're doing is they're pretty much saying, OK, he's 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 with us. And we're talking about masculinity because we're conservative. And since he's talking about that, even though he's not really, truly conservative in his lifestyle, we want you to follow him and don't look at what he might have done to undermine the things that he has said. And they're in on the grift. It's a hustle for a lot of them. This is why it is that I've told people, if you want to give, if you want to go and preach, then make sure you've got another source of income and support when you do this, because people don't support the truth. They rarely do. And that's why when any of you have ever sent any support to me, I really give y'all, I thank y'all and I give y'all a shout out because I may be wrong about something because of an honest mistake, but I'm not willing to sit up and actually lie. I'd get busted if I did anyway. So that means I support, I, I thank you so much and give y'all shouts out because you support at least an attempt at the truth. You are rare. I'd rather those of you that I have than I have a bunch of other people ready to send me um, hundreds at a time to lie. You are the reason that you and my other job for which I thank God, both of you. I mean, I thank God for you and for my, my main job teaching. Those are the two things, by the mercy of God, for which I don't have to lie to make it. And I wanted to thank y'all for that. I really do appreciate that from the bottom of my black heart and from the depths of my black mind. But understand, I'm not going to be the dead horse. I'm landing this. I, I landed the plane at this point. I wanted you to understand that these misconceptions are intentional. And that they're designed at every stage to deny you the credit that is rightfully due to you for the positive changes you have brought about. Just like in history, when it came to inventions, it was the same thing. The lies, the general perception that we all had about human history was designed to cover up your contributions to the betterment of the human condition. Same thing, same thing right now in this case. These lies and these misconceptions are designed so that you don't understand your, your um, contribution to the revolutionary way in which the relations between the genders are about to be corrected. And not only that, but the ease and comfort that is available and though there is hardship, the hardship that is not immediately jumping on anybody that even accepts the truth, the solution that I have told is good for our people. People can accept it no matter what their genetic background is. They can turn around and accept it. And, and certain things are going to be brought in as a test. But there's a level of hardship that they will not have to go through that they would have had to go through before. They won't have to go through that now. And it's largely been because of you. Whether it's in the United States or not in the U.S., whether it's in the U.S. or whether it is in Europe or uh, any other nation in which Muslims are either a minority or they're almost non-existent. When someone, anyone, any race, any gender accepts Islam, there are things that do not happen to them anymore because of you, black man. And even a lot of righteous black women that made sacrifices back then. 
And I want them to get the credit that they deserve. The difference is that in, the, in these circles, they will get the credit because we're not willing to deny them that credit when we know about what it is that they've done. We're not willing to deny Betty Shabazz the credit for the sacrifices she made. That's the difference, and that's why I'm not harping on it too much. I'm saying that there are, there are circles in which they'll get it. These folks with the misconceptions want to make sure that there will never be circles in which you will get the credit that you deserve for your contributions to the positive outcomes. And I, for one, I'm just not willing to be silent and, and not say anything about it. Now that I've seen what it is and exactly how far it's going to get, I'm telling you, I'm not going to uh, uh, just, now that I'm aware, I'm just not going to be silent and not say anything to you about it. You even got Muslims that are white who became Muslim. They weren't born, uh, in, they were born into white European, uh, Western European, Protestant or Catholic families. And they're calling this stuff out because they're sick of it. They see the misconceptions and the lies and they're like, no, no, this is not fair. This, it is not fair. You cannot sit up here and take this message and then turn around and ally yourselves with white supremacists. What the F are you doing? That is, that's oppression. You don't side with the oppressor here. You got them saying this. I told you about the features, Bill, all of the features. You know about that. There's another channel, Runaway Slave. He talks about that. I told you about Saad Imam, the Imam out of San Antonio. Who can explain a lot of these things to you. Now, he doesn't have the same problems with Daniel Hakikachu that I do. But nonetheless, um, I think Daniel would know to hide anything from him that would just outright expose him too. But nonetheless, what I'm getting at is that I mentioned them to you. You can go to a guy named Jake Brancatella's channel and he will tell you. He actually is, is very busy calling both of these guys out, Sneeko and Tate and anyone else that rocks with them and saying, you cannot take this preaching, this message and try to mix it with whites. There cannot be an alliance. You are also an N-word to them. You can't ally yourselves with them. And so if he's willing to do this and I'm now aware of how far this is going to go, then I got to tell you because straight, straight like this. And this ain't just about me either, because honestly, the way that those guys like Tate and Sneak over doing the way they act and racially speaking, I can understand why many of you would not trust someone that looks like me. I don't even fault you for it. You're defending yourself. I don't even blame a lot of the black Saudis when they see me and they don't trust me at first. I don't blame them. I got to meet them through somebody. I don't blame them for not trusting me. Because to a certain extent, sometimes they've had to face that here. And it is the fault of people uh, like my, my former student that he was the first one to fail because of that attitude. And it's also the fault of some people who, uh, like Sneeko and Tate, claim Islam and then turn around and just, you know, normalize not only whiteness, but white supremacy and white nationalism on top of that. It is there. It is the fault of folks like that. And then I come around. And now that I've gotten a beard, I kind of look like Andrew Tate a little bit. I'm bald. And also now I've got a full beard growing in. Just started to grow in full. So I kind of look like a slightly plumper Andrew Tate. And now I walk around. And if I see a brother here from here and I throw the head, I throw him the head nod, I slam Lakeham. What's good, man? And they're like, oh, well, Lakeham Salam. And they, and they keep on moving. And sometimes they're shocked, like, was he talking? Sometimes they don't even answer. It's not that they're mean mugging me or nothing like that. They just look over their shoulder because they think I'm talking to somebody else. If my son were here with me and we gave him the head nod, they would know right off the bat, oh, yeah, these are two brothers nodding their head at me. It's not just about that. That's not the only reason I'm telling you, because at least I can have a conversation with the local brothers in Arabic and eventually they'll figure out, oh, OK, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it now. At the, at the very least. Hell, sometimes I just say, listen, do you speak a third language? If they do, it's probably going to be Swahili or Hausa. They probably won't. And if they say, yeah, well, I don't. But my grandparents spoke Hausa. I'll be like, oh, y'all are my kin folks. Word? And then they get it. Okay, so I, I can get over that to a certain extent. But what I'm saying is that there are going to be a bunch of people that actually are going to be shut out and isolated. I can handle it, but not everybody can. It's going to be the fault of, of, of cats like this. 
Because what these guys are being used to do, Tate and Sneeko, as an example, is that they are being used to trick you into a type of, into a worse black annoyance than which you might actually need. So that you will make enemies out of neutral parties that could have been allies. That's part of it. They would love that. Because then they could sit back and say, see, I told you they're inferior. See, while many of us are sitting up and saying everybody's against us, everybody can't stand us. While we're sitting up and saying this, and sometimes we're saying it in a context in which it's verified or justified, and other times we're not. Other times we're, we're exaggerating because we, we think that that, that that actually is the case. But you see, when we're sitting up and saying this, while we're saying that it's already too bad, they're looking and saying it's not bad enough because they know how much other people don't hate us and they wish they did. So everybody ain't your enemy. You want to know why it is that Tate's, the both Tate's had something bad to say about Bengalis? You really want to know why? Because Bengalis don't hate you. They don't even dislike you per se. They got problems with Nigerians because of certain things that have gone on in Bangladesh, but they don't have a problem with black people because the concept of race is not even the same as it is in India across the boundary. Did y'all know that? People from Bangladesh are not your enemies. They're just not. When they get to know you, they actually kind of look up to us. That's why they said something about them and not about the uh, uh, about other groups specifically. <laughs> why do you think that um, the Eastern Asians will crap on the Southeast Asians and call them jungle Asians? Because they don't hate you. And what these guys want is for you to turn on them as well. And start stuff with them, not mistaking them for someone else that is an enemy, but thinking that they are who they are. And yet that that identity is one of your enemy, identifying them correctly based on their origin, but misidentifying them as an enemy when they're not. That's exactly what the hell they want, because as far as they are concerned, the world does not hate you and me enough. I hope that this helps and thank you for bearing with me for these 48 minutes. I really do appreciate that, but I didn't want to leave this untouched and unturned, especially for the black manosphere show of the week. So thank you for bearing with me on this long flight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for flying with me again here on Jet Black Air, where the phrase jet black is also a verb. Black heart, black mind, black out. Aslam alaikum to some of you in black heterosexual non-select male power because they don't like it black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day keep jetting black with us till the wings and the wheels fall off gender justice forever <laughs>